Hey, Twitter world, it's yours truly. Bangle coming back at you with another video, and today we are doing a realistic rebuild of the Buffalo Bills, and I've got my festive uh, Christmas kind of pullover on. We're having a blast. We're ready to go. We're ready to take on this team. We got Josh Allen, maybe as the future. We'll have to see how this one goes. And today, of course, we are rebuilding the Buffalo Bills, and I do want to take a note and stop you guys for a second and say the support on the channel has been awesome lately but even outside of the rebuilds there are a number of different videos that i do that i think you guys might enjoy checking out if you actually are football fans where whether it's opinion videos based on like today for example as i record this i uploaded who the or who should the giants draft if chase young goes back to ohio state i think that's a, a nice opinion style video and if you want to see more videos like that on different teams different players draft related or not check those out we're doing a lot of quiz videos as well if you think you've got some awesome nfl knowledge Check out some of these quiz videos. For example, if you could name the all-time NFL yards leaders for each team in each category for passing, rushing, and receiving, did a quiz on that. Did a quiz on the top five yearly passing leaders uh, since 1973, or 1970, since the NFL merger. So, I mean, there are some awesome quiz videos that I would really, really like you guys to check out. If it's not your thing and you're just here for bad, then that's fine, but... Check out the other football stuff if it might pique your interest. Let's go ahead and rebuild the Buffalo Bills after a quick word from our sponsor. Uh, yes, the holiday season is officially back. So we are in full swing here in December, and that means I am sponsored by one of my favorite companies to work with in Manscaped. They are an essential grooming service that you absolutely have to try out if you do not already. Of course, they feature the Lawnmower 2.0, which is an incredible, very safe razor electric trimmer you will never cut yourself guaranteed you got the crop preserver it's a ball deodorant you're going to use deodorant under your arms why not use it on an even more disgusting part of your body the crop cleanser awesome hair and body wash would very much highly recommend it and the plow 2.0 for sensitive areas and of course when you shave downstairs makes the christmas tree look bigger and speaking of shaving Manscaped is also shaving prices because you get 20% off when you use code BANGLE20 at checkout with two free gifts. Treat yourself this holiday season. Your balls will thank you. So we're jumping into week 15 here, and the Bills have been quite a successful team this year. Now, a quick argument to that would be, hey, the Bills have one of the easiest schedules imaginable, and while that is true, their defense is still one of the best defenses in the league. Uh, they were great last year, they're great again this year, and they're carrying this team because the offense is not that good, but the defense is so amazing. Micah Hyde is a tremendous player, superstar development, we'll have to work around that. Jordan Poyer is a pretty good player, Jadavius White continues to be one of the better cornerbacks in the league. Ed Oliver, a defensive tackle, first round pick out of Houston, has been um, a pleasant surprise about how good he's been so quickly. Tremaine Edmonds is blossoming from kind of confused rookie to tremendous sophomore talent um, at linebacker. They've just got a bunch of really, really good players, and um, they just mesh well together. They might not have the star power there. Like, Levi Wallace is so good, and nobody knows who Levi Wallace is. Of course, we also have Teron Johnson, Jack Lawson on this team, Jordan Phillips, Star Latulale, Trent Murphy. Matt Milano is a pretty underrated linebacker. Lorenzo Alexander burst out onto the scene at like 35 years old, and he's uh, 36 now. So he's super, super old. Uh, talked about Jordan Poirier. They have Kurt Coleman even on this team. On the offensive side of the ball, it gets a little bit worse. Now, Deion Dawkins is not too bad. Quentin Spain, Mitch Morse, they brought in from Kansas City in free agency. John Feliciano um, is finally a regular starter as he was a backup that got a lot of playing time in Oakland due to injury and was really good for the Raiders. Ty and Secchi as well. Um, of course, they drafted Cody Ford. They got him. So we're definitely going to want to give Cody Ford a lot of playing time, probably start him at right tackle, uh, even though we're at the very end of the first season. Tyler Croft is in here. Uh, Lee Smith even. And then at wide receiver, John Brown's had a great season this year. Robert Foster's okay. Cole Beasley, when healthy, is one of the better slot receivers in the NFL, you could say. Andre Roberts is a great return man. So that kind of came out of nowhere uh, these past couple seasons. And then, of course, you got Josh Allen. He's still up and down, inconsistent, but he's still quite young, only 23 years old. But for our sake, he's going to be pretty unbelievably good. 78 overall, 23 years old, star development. He should get to a very, very high overall, I would have to guess. And then Frank Gore is going to be benched for... Uh, Devin Singletary, who's looked awesome. 
of course, TJ Yeldon in there as well. Sonoris Perry, Matt Barkley, Patrick DeMarco. But uh, let's go ahead and simulate to the end of Season 1 here. We're, we'll simulate to the playoffs um, after I load in the realistic draft class for 2020. But what I will say is um, as we lose to the Steelers 31 nothing. What I will say, though, is this first season doesn't really matter a whole lot. It's a, a lot based off of real-life performance. And for the sake of the rebuild, it's about what we can do to build up this team. Not so much what happens with um, you know, the actual team that's currently in place. Now, I know what a lot of you might be thinking when you see uh, Chase Young at the top of the draft board here in terms of all positions. It's not a thing for sure that he's going to return to... Ohio State. So I'm not taking him out of the draft class yet, even though I'm sure a lot of people want that to happen. It's not going to happen yet. He's draft eligible. So we would finish 10 and 6. So a remarkable, remarkable uh, downhill spiral that this team went on. We start playing good teams. Uh, maybe. Ravens for sure. Steelers, eh, whatever. Patriots, yes. And then beat the Jets. But I don't know. This team is not there yet. So I don't know. Um, how dominant it's going to be in simulation at the start, but we have a breakout challenge for Matt Milano in the wild card. I didn't even know these moments happened in the playoffs. Now, I would highly doubt that we hold the Chiefs to less than 250 total yards. I suppose it's possible, but again, I highly doubt it. And if Matt Milano makes a play to get up to star development, great. He probably won't. Just probably won't happen. If we're going to be realistic, so rarely in simulation do players actually... Uh, get that development increase when they have a challenge. We lose 28-24. So I would say allowing 28 points, they probably had more than 250 total yards. And, um, yep, Matt Milano did not do anything that he needed to do. He does not get a development increase. And we're not going to check out the stats for Season 1 because it's pretty much all in real-life stats anyway. We're just going to jump right into the offseason. Re-signings, free agency, that sort of thing. Shaq Lawson, former first-round draft pick, seems to be our top priority impending free agent. Now, he's 26 years old, star development, isn't really playing a whole lot, but this is a really cheap contract. So I can definitely afford to bring Shaq Lawson back, and we're going to do so on a five-year deal. But he wants to play for a new team. I'm not going to franchise tag him, as there's no point to do that, but I do want to bring back Levi Wallace, who is a little bit more expensive than Shaq Lawson would have been. Hopefully, he actually resigns, though, and he does. Quentin Spain is here. I'll probably offer Quentin Spain a contract. He is 29, only a 77 overall. But we could do with a two-year deal. Now, is he going to progress? Probably not at all. He's probably only going to regress, and we can't bring back Lorenzo Alexander. I mean, he's down to a 75 overall. He's 37. He had 34 total regression points. He went from an 83 or an 84 to a 75. We cannot bring back Lorenzo Alexander. Can't do it. We have to improve at that position. And the defense is so strange because... I mean, it's listed here as a 4-3, but Lorenzo Alexander is more of a pass rusher um, than an off-the-ball linebacker in a lot of ways. Matt Milano got up to star development anyway, so that's very nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, Ed Oliver has superstar. Did he get that, or did he start with that? Let's see. He must have started with it. Tredavious White got up to star development, or superstar development, though, which is awesome. He got unfakeable. But it's just about him developing faster. And then offensively, um, no changes as far as I can tell, except for regression. And uh, we don't even talk about Voshan Joseph. I think Voshan Joseph has the potential to be a pretty good player in the league. He was a late-round draft pick out of Florida that was so good in certain uh, instances for the Gators in his career there but was also so terrible at times. He's such a high-ceiling player that if Oshan Joseph is actually a plus player in like five years, it would be the least shocking thing to me ever. But also, if he fizzles out, it can't be too shocking either. So I know it's kind of like I'm covering my bases there. I'm really not trying to do that. But I think he could be pretty good um, if he developed, obviously. Jerry Hughes is 32 years old already. 78 overall. Probably should look to improve upon that position. What can we really do here in free agency? Austin Hooper would be a decent addition. There's never really like any good offensive lineman at all. It's the same guys every time, clearly, and they're not really all that helpful. Time for the 2020 NFL Draft. We pick at number 21 overall. Again, I wouldn't be opposed to trading up. 
But we're probably taking a receiver at 21. I'm interested to see how the top of the draft goes. So we'll like show the top five maybe as the Bengals snag Joe Burrow. I'm used to seeing that. Tua to the Giants. Dolphins take Justin Herbert. Three quarterbacks go in a row. I'd be shocked to see the Giants take a QB, but the Redskins go Derek Brown. Chase Young still on the board at five, and there's no sign of him being taken. Chase Young is free-falling like he's Tom Petty. Where is he going to go? How is Chase Young available at 10? I know what you're thinking. Trade up. Trade up for Chase Young. We've taken him in too many realistic rebuilds. How is he still on the board? When is Chase Young going to get drafted? Oh my goodness. It's pick 15. He's the best player in the class. Finally, he goes at 16 to the Broncos. He almost fell to our pick at 21. As there goes C.D. Lamb just in front of us. That's a little bit disappointing. Um, could go cornerback. Could go Henry Ruggs. We've taken him before. Could go with running back. Although we don't really need running back. I think we're going to take T. Higgins. Just because I feel like that's, uh, that's a really good receiver. Someone that could definitely go in the first round in real life. We've taken Henry Ruggs recently. And I do want to have a little bit of variation in there. So I'm, I'm going to take T. Higgins. We're going to take T. Higgins here at number 21 overall. Sure, he's ranked number 46 in the class. But 73 overall is not bad. Star development or better. 91 speed. 87 spectacular catch. 83 release. Good jumping at 94. T. Higgins to the Buffalo Bills. Could very much see that happening in real life as we'll simulate now to basically the end of the second round. Henry Ruggs is still available at the end of the second round, so I'm going to take him. He's a 75 overall, star better development. Now, I know we took him in, I want to say the Bears rebuild, but he's available here late in the second round. We need the receiving help. We just got Josh Allen, a major deep threat. 96 speed, 97 acceleration. Uh, the catching attributes aren't crazy, but at that athleticism is crazy. And now T. Higgins and Henry Ruggs could combine to be one of the most dangerous rookie receiving combo threats ever. Who, who are some of the like the best rookie receiving tandems? It doesn't really happen too much. That that's a thing, but I don't, I don't even know. Let's take Marco Wilson here out of Florida. Like Marco Wilson a lot. 70 overall star, better development. Adds to our cornerback depth. He's not bad. Just got to improve that play rec and that awareness a little bit. Um, decent, well-rounded in coverage. Pretty good player. Pretty good pick for us. And, uh, yeah, it's very, very difficult to find rookie receiving combos ever that were even somewhat decent. So, um, yeah, I, I really couldn't find too much on it. And uh, I guess we'll go, we'll go tight end here. Let's go Jake Breland out of Oregon. 68 overall, normal dev. Ranked number 123. We took him at 117. He, um, what does he do well? It's a good question. Uh, if you guys figure it out, get back to me. But that's going to do it for the draft. We got two stud receivers. Now, what do we do with John Brown? What do we do with Cole Beasley? That's a good question. This is the team for season number two. I'm going to have T. Higgins be our number two receiver. Henry Ruggs at number three. I'm also going to have T. Higgins in the slot. Henry Ruggs just behind him. Those are the only rookies we're going to start. We have Marco Wilson as our fourth cornerback. Probably not going to play a whole lot. And then Chase Lucas. Probably not going to play a whole lot either. But, uh, I mean, there's, there's some good stuff with him potentially. We'll have to see how these guys develop. We gave Levi Wallace an extension. I don't know if that's going to happen for Teron Johnson. Sure, he's a young player. But if he only keeps star or normal development, doesn't get up to star, there's not a whole lot there. Went to Weber State, which is the only football player that I can name going to Weber State. Now, I can name another pro athlete in uh, my favorite basketball player in Damian Lillard. But just, can you name another NFL player who went to Weber State? Because I cannot I wouldn't even have a guess. We're going to move Voshan Joseph to right outside linebacker. And he goes up to a 68 overall. Maybe there's something there with him. But we're going to simulate to the midseason mark and check in, see how this team's doing after I spend some coach XP. Five and three at the midseason mark. I'll take that Jordan Poyer is an impending free agent. Now that's an interesting one. As he's 29, 83 overall, star development. But would I be comfortable offering him a four-year deal to regress in front of my very eyes? Probably not. Probably not. Now, I would give him uh, three years is even too much. 
he's not going to accept it either way. Even if I bump up the money, he's not going to accept this contract. He wants the bonus and length to go up. I don't want to give you an extension. I know you're a good player in real life. I know regression's a little bit overpowered in the game, in my opinion. Don't know that I could afford to bring him back. Now, Matt Milano, on the other hand, 26 years old, he'll be able to continue to progress. I said he'll very oddly, uh, but he'll be able to continue to progress for a few years before regression. So I do want to bring him back. 47 over 5, and Matt Milano returns. Trent Murphy, I'm out on. Deion Dawkins is super expensive. Are you kidding me? That's too much money to give to you. Now, I know that that's pretty much what the tackle market is because Donovan Smith got paid by the Bucks. What a terrible contract that was. I guess I'd give you... you want, he wants a higher salary. I just... I don't know that I can swing it. A lot of these contracts, I just don't really want to give out. <laughs> it's uh, it's tough. Bohorquez, Borquez, I think that's pronounced, we're going to give a, a huge contract to, but it was super, super cheap. So whatever. We did not make the playoffs. We were five and three. We finished six and ten. What's happening? What went wrong in the second half of the season? Everything. We lost to everybody. Except for the Jets, who we smashed 28 0. I'm so confused. Is this on the offense or the defense or what's happening here? Because Josh Allen wins MVP in like every rebuild that we do, where I'm not the Bills. And we were just bad in general. Josh Allen wasn't great. Devin Singletary never really got it going. Receiving. T. Higgins had a pretty good season. John Brown, Tyler Croft, Henry Ruggs was okay. Um, we're just in a transitional period. These guys are developing. They're not good enough players yet, maybe. Trent Murphy had 11 sacks. Jerry Hughes with 8.5. Trent or Tremaine Edmonds even got 4.5. Interceptions, only two for Davius White. Led the squad. No defensive touchdowns as far as I could tell. And then yearly awards, Marcus Mariota wins MVP. That happens all the time too, which is stupid, and I will never not hate it. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Jacoby Brissett. Josh Allen at 8. With those numbers, all right. Defensive Player of the Year, Ryan Shazier. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Joe Burrow and the Bengals. T. Higgins at 3. Henry Ruggs at 5. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to K. LeVon Chason, which is a fun name to say. Uh, playoff time is over. We didn't. We weren't a part of it, but it's now time to maybe re-sign Jordan Poyer. And he's down to an 81 overall. He's 30 now. You're seeing that he's regressing. I can't bring him back. It just can't happen. I got to let uh, let Jordan Poyer go. Deion Dawkins is someone that I probably should bring back. What did he want? He wants a higher salary. I mean, he, he's a good player. This was his, this is as high as I would go. And Deion Dawkins returns. Okay, long-term deal for him. Don't need TJ Yeldon. Don't need Trent Murphy. He's 30. Another situation where you have to factor in regression, and you can't be signing these players who are 80 overalls near 30 years old. Be like, oh, he'll be good. No, in three years, he's going to be a 70 overall and worthless. There's no reason to waste money on those types of players. Joey Bose is in free agency. I'm giving him everything. Chris Godwin is in free agency and also has superstar X-Factor. Finally, some players that you don't see in free agency every single time. Chris Godwin would be a really, really good addition to our team. Uh, I would, I'm would. i thinking about let's do it. Let's do it. Let's give Chris Godwin big money. Two huge contracts, but they could really help out the team. And uh, hopefully we manage to snag him. Ooh, we got Joey Bosa and Chris Godwin. Huge free agency for these Buffalo Bills. Chris Godwin is a huge addition. John Brown's regressing. Cole Beasley's as good as gone at 75 overall. This is a great trio. Chris Godwin, T. Higgins, Henry Ruggs. Boom. That's perfect. Could use an upgrade at right guard. Quentin Spain starting to regress. We need to improve our offensive line. And then defensively, Matt Milano is up to superstar development. He's always someone that just progresses so quickly, and I don't get it. Like, he gets so many upgrade points. You always see him in free agency with superstar development or even superstar X-Factor sometimes. It's crazy how good he gets. Joey Bosa is a huge get for our team. The defensive line's pretty good. Harrison Phillips is all right. Um, cornerbacks are pretty good. I mean, we have a lot of young talent there. We need to improve at strong safety. Outside linebacker probably as well. And then offensively, just offensive line. Didn't even talk about Dawson Knox, but he's a pretty good player. I think he's actually their starting tight end. 
Uh, I, I feel like he plays a lot more than Tyler Croft in the games that I've seen. Could be mistaken on that one, though. And um, I also gave an offer to Chuck Clark. It was almost no money. So I really, really doubt that that's ever accepted. And uh, we're going to pick up the fifth-year extension on Josh Allen, of course, because realistic rebuild, we're going to say that he would at least get a fifth-year option. And I am the GM, so I'm making the decisions, of course. Same thing on Tremaine Edmonds. We're bringing them back. They're young players. We want to keep them on that rookie deal before extending them uh, even further. So we have another year to figure it out, see what we want to do. But it's draft time. It's time to see if we can really improve this team. Now, we did really, really poorly this past season, so we're going to have a good pick. Probably top 12-ish. Uh, we pick at number 5. Really? I'll take that. I mean, we could definitely move back if we wanted to. Um, what are our top positions of need? Outside linebacker. Still, I think edge. Edge could be a big position of need for us. And I only say that because Jerry Hughes is so old now. Only a 75 overall. What? How many years left do we have you, Jerry Hughes? Please, tell me you're almost gone. Like I, I like Jerry Hughes, but yeah, he's on his last year. So we need edge. We need outside linebacker, maybe. Offensive line. And um, I don't think we need to take cornerback, but safety is definitely something I would consider. So I could move a safety back to corner. Nope, that's not how that works. Corner back to safety is what I meant to say. Oh my god, baller right guard with amazing top skills. I'm in. Cornerback is number one overall. Pearson Whitworth to the Jets. And then the Vikings take the player that I would have very heavily considered at number five in Nick Slade out of Clemson. 78 overall. That might be the best player in the entire class. There goes the other player I was considering. And here we are at five. Great. Now, Keontae Bynes. Keon, all right, Keontae. Looks pretty amazing. I'm going to say that. And do we need him? over Harrison Phillips not we it's not a huge need but he also looks amazing so I'm really considering that and I think it's going to be the pick honestly just because he looks like such a such a talented player I'm going to take I'm going to take him Keontae Bynes out of Arizona State welcome to the Buffalo Bills build up that defensive line he's number six in the class we took him at number five 76 overall star better development 90 strength 83 power move 78 block shed 76 speed pretty good i'm i'm very happy with that pick all right second round now who is still on my draft board just the right guard i'm gonna take him why not evan jennings is a 75 overall ranked number seven in the class star or better development he's gonna start right away 88 strength 83 run block not so much of a pass blocker in general but another really really good player really good pick for us as we'll simulate now to the third round. And in the third round, I'm going to take the final player off my draft board in a projected fifth rounder in Ralph Peters. First round talent, 70 overall, ranked number 25 in the class. We took him at number 69. Nice. 93 strength, good run block, good pass block. Really well-rounded. He's another guy that I actually uh, will probably end up starting at some point. Trading down, we can get a third rounder next year. So I'm definitely going to do that. Who's going to be bad? Saints or Seahawks? Probably the Saints are going to be worse. I would ha I would have to guess just based on their quarterback situation. Maybe not, though. They, they were surprised. They're both probably going to be in the same ballpark of talent. So 78 overall was indeed the highest overall in the class. The right guard that I didn't take, Stanley Coffey out of Notre Dame. I considered it. I really did. Went with the de defensive tackle instead, which I don't regret at all. Just based on the offensive lineman we took later. But, you know, two pretty dang good offensive lineman uh but again I'm, I'm very happy with my selection i think keontae Bynes is going to be a big difference maker and if he has like superstar x factor that'd be awesome of course we're going to end up finding out what these development traits are anyway um but we don't know now but we will figure it out these are obvious things that i'm saying that it holds no value to me even opening my mouth at all we need another off season to really improve but i do want to see how these players are going to progress which will make our decisions a lot easier. And did we take a defensive tackle instead of a bigger need? Yeah, we definitely did. But sometimes you got to go best player available, and he looked like the best player available to me. I'm not mad at the selection at all. I think he's going to be a good player. So I'm excited to see how he, uh, how he develops. But it's time to simulate to the midseason mark and check in to how this team's doing. We've collapsed at the midseason mark um, last year. 
Hopefully it goes a different way this year. Four, two, and one at the midseason mark. Second place behind the five, two, and one Jets, who we also conveniently play this week for the division leads. That's fun. Now, Tredavious White being re-signed to a long-term deal, not going to be so much fun as he is going to be expensive. Micah Hyde, same deal. John Brown's got to go. Teron Johnson, I probably don't need to re-sign. Tyler Croft, same deal. Quentin Spain, same deal. Jerry Hughes, same deal. Harrison Phillips was an impending free agent. Okay, good move to take the defensive tackle. So we're going to bring back Micah Hyde. I know he's 30, but he's a high enough overall where it really won't matter as much. Now he is going to regress big time. That can't be a face scan. It looks like it might be, but it doesn't really look a whole lot like Micah Hyde. And then we got to give Tredavious White a pretty hefty contract to bring him back, but we do. So our two biggest priorities are back in Buffalo. A lot of Bs there. And I don't know. I think what we're going to do, given who our impending free agents are, as Jennings has superstar development. Let's go. What a great draft. He was a baller. He said, hey, Roger Goodell, combine? I don't think so, bitch. I'm not doing it. So that is a fantastic draft pick. Also, I want Peters to play over Quentin Spain. So he's going to start at left guard now. The fact that he is um, younger with not an expiring contract and he has generally pretty good pass blocking and run blocking, I think he's going to be a good left guard. We're going to take the six overall hit just to get the better player in there. Cody Ford continues to progress. And that honestly might be a better fit at guard than Peters and we could put Peters back at right tackle, but we're not going to change anything. And then defensively, only star development for Bynes, which is a little bit disappointing. I was hoping that'd be higher, obviously. But we got the superstar development right guard, and that is very, very hard to come by. We'll upgrade the team, and I really think this team has the potential to be a playoff team. Again, I think we're another year away from being like a really, really talented team, but it's, it's a good team right now, and I think we can compete for a playoff spot so let's see if that is indeed something that might happen. Playoff time. Let's see if we got it. Didn't make the playoffs. Finished 7-8-1. and one. What happens in the second half of the season that this team absolutely falls apart? It's just crumbling. We lost five games in a row. And then beat the Dolphins by three. And they're pretty close games, too, that we're losing for the most part. This is just as my phone falls. That's really the metaphor for the video right now is everything is falling apart. It was in the charger and it's just crumbling to the ground. Quit franchise mode? Yeah, probably should have. Okay, Teron Johnson is a free agent. We can make a decision by bringing him back. 26 years old. That's got a way into the decision. Quentin Spain's going to go. Harrison Phillips is going to go. Jerry Hughes at 71 overall, 34 years old. It's going to go. What does Teron Johnson want? Not even that much. We don't really have a ton of money. If you will accept a decreased deal, I will bring you back. All right, Teron Johnson returns. Okay. That makes it a lot easier because that's a really good depth cornerback that, I mean, can start right now. So we have something there. And then in free agency, not a whole lot of money. We, you know, shelled out big money to Chris Godwin, big money to Joey Bosa. But those were, those were contracts that I'm extremely comfortable handing out. Chenna Nwosu's here. That could be a good get for us. Marcus Davenport. And I only consider that because he's still so young. If we can really steal him for, like, super cheap like this, that'd be an awesome, awesome pickup. Now, is that realistic that that would happen for us in this? No, but yes. Oh, I didn't think he would sign at all. He signs immediately. So Marcus Davenport is a pretty big get for us just because that's a that's a young defense or young defensive lineman that can definitely improve. Start at right end right away. Already an upgrade over Jerry Hughes significantly. A little bit of regression from Micah Hyde now. Levi Wallace, Teron Johnson, Marco Wilson, Chase Lucas. We have five good corners. Need a safety. We could move. We could move Teron Johnson back. Maybe we could move Marco Wilson back if we don't pick up one. Still need an outside linebacker. Still need a safety. And then offensively, the offensive line's 
in a fine spot. Really are just looking at tight end and maybe running back. Devin Singletary is not progressing that well at all. Midway through the first round here, we're picking at number 14 overall. Who is available? There's a running back, Justice Bryson. I don't like anything about his name. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of amazing, but also not. He's got his first name is Justice, which there's a lot to unwrap there. And his last name is the whitest first name I can even imagine of being Bryson. It's crazy, but he looks really good. So I might consider taking him now could also trade down. There's it's a weird draft class for my needs as they all seem to be. Uh, Damon Goodwell at a Boston College looks to be pretty good. That might be the move. And in fact, oh, who's, who's, this? who's this guy? Ah, he's slow. Four, five, seven. I think we're going to take... Would it be a mistake to take Damon Goodwell? He looks really good. That's the problem. Play him at outside linebacker. That's what we need. Safeties aren't that good. We're going to take him. Damon Goodwell. 77 overall. He's number two player in the class. Here's the thing. He's got normal development and he's 24. I hate you. I regret this pick. Nice block shedding, to be fair. And he's not bad. Like a 77 overall, is a, is a that's a good player. But normal dev in 24, I want to puke. Did someone say back-to-back -back offensive lineman? Yeah, you heard right. Travis Goldberg out of the U. Probably not a whole lot of Goldbergs down there, but he is a 75 overall. Also hidden development with the offensive lineman we took the previous year. A little bit later. Number seven. I think they were ranked the exact same. Maybe this is a superstar dev player. He looks pretty good. Strength is a little bit low, but a really talented player. And now we're in a situation where we have a lot of options on the offensive line. And you know why we have even more? Because I'm taking an offensive lineman here. Uh, he looks pretty good. I like what he offers us. Peter Masters out of Memphis. Best player available. 71 overall, normal development. Some of these players are going to be used as trade bait, probably. Now, this is a realistic rebuild, but players get traded all the time. It's not that crazy. Trading a third and a fourth this year, as well as a third next year for a second next year from the Bears. It's time to get some higher picks and work up the board a little bit because I have I traded down a lot and I didn't really show it but I have a lot of mid-round picks that I can potentially turn into uh, future picks with, with random teams now is there any way I can get their second round pick next year it's unlikely I should be able to get this third maybe okay we got it I'm going to use these picks to move up of the board again so be prepared not this year but next year trading a 6, a 7, and a 7 for a 4th it's a pretty good value. It's going to end the uh, draft for us. So Goldberg is a 77 overall left guard. Guess what position he's going to be playing? Nose tackle. No, he'll be playing left guard. I, I kid, of course. But yeah, that's a, that's a really good addition to our offensive line because it's like drafting a 77 overall offensive lineman with star development or better. We have Dawson Knox. We got Mo Alley Cox. There's a rap to be made there. Uh, but Mo Alleycox, former basketball player at uh, Virginia Commonwealth, a.k.a. VCU. He's pretty good there. Didn't really play football, but then the Colts are like, well, you can play football professionally. And he's like, but I played basketball. And they're like, no, not going to the NBA. So he's here now. Defensively, uh, our defense is pretty good. We got something to work with with Marcus Davenport. Goodwell is going to be... A right outside linebacker. I mean, we'll see how that goes. Teron Johnson's going to move back to strong safety just because we need somebody to do it, and he's uh, he's better than the other options, and we just gave him a contract extension. Learn the position, whatever. Hopefully that goes pretty well. That's the only thing I can say. Hopefully it goes well. I need a kicker. The CPU will sign one, whatever. We'll have Marco Wilson in the slot, in the nickel, and I think things look pretty good. We'll figure it out. Uh, let's just not be terrible this year. Let's uh, win a couple games. And then continue to win games in the second half of the season. Because they trick us and they're like, hey, we won five games at the midseason mark. This is going to be a playoff theme. And you go, sick, playoffs. And they go, hold on. We're going to win two games the rest of the season. How does that sound? I go, not good. And they go, well, that's what's happening. So look, we'll probably win about five games. Maybe we'll be four in this range. Could be even higher. We're three and four. Maybe this is what we needed. Dolphins are atop the division at four, two, and one. 
We just needed a wake-up call. This is this is the playoff run. We're going to go off the second half of the season this time. Tremaine Edmonds, Josh Allen. Kirk Cousins is here? Who is signing Kirk Cousins? This is why we don't have any money. How did Kirk Cousins end up on the Bills? You've got to be kidding me. I guess our backup quarterback is Kirk Cousins. Mitch Morse is in here. We don't need to bring back Mitch Morse because of the other offensive linemen we have. What does Cody Ford want? Eh, it's like not that much, but we have, I mean, there's so many free agents here of like potentially good players for us, but we keep drafting offensive linemen and they keep being pretty good. Goldberg only has star development, but star development isn't bad. So Peters could play. Mm, we kind of need Cody Ford, huh? If we don't bring back Mitch Morse and we kind of need Mitch Morse. I haven't decided what's going to happen yet. So I brought back Cody Ford and Devin Singletary. Mitch Morse wants a higher salary. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> Kirk Cousins, we're not going to talk about it. I brought back Josh Allen on a huge deal. It's like 25 mil annually. And Tremaine Edmonds is also back as well on a six-year deal. So they're locked up for a long time. Again, I don't know how Kirk Cousins snuck his way onto this team. We're playing the Vikings now. Did he just like get off the bus and, and go to our locker room because of CTE or something? I don't know what's going on with that. We're going to simulate to the playoffs. We're not bringing back Kirk Cousins, I will tell you that much. I don't know how much we're paying him, but whatever it is, it's way too much. So we missed the playoffs again. It's just it's so confusing to me. We went 7-8-1. and one. Every time in simulation, when the CPU controls them with a lower overall, they are more successful. What am I doing differently? I swear, if, if I let this team go, and I, I went to another team in the division, like, we'll say, the Patriots... The Patriots would be going 7-8-1, and one, and the Bills would be undefeated. I guarantee it. And you're like, well, test it then. No, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But uh, it's, it's just so dumb. Like, Josh Allen's an MVP candidate every single year. And then when we have him, nope. Josh Allen can't win anything. Patriots are in the Super Bowl. That should be us. That should be the Bills. We'll check out the season stats just so I can be disappointed. Our offense is garbage. How is the Bills' offense so amazing in simulation? Our defense was pretty good. I give him weapons. I give him a lot of weapons. I give him a good offensive line. And you know how he repays me? By being human garbage. What a waste of space. Oh, but he can run the ball pretty well. Wow. Henry Ruggs, pretty good season. Defensively, Tremaine Edmonds was great we got almost no pressure i don't again no turnovers how is this defense so good i gotta change these playbooks all around because it is not working buffalo playbooks like usually pretty good when you just pick it up but here when we're using it of course it's not good because nothing makes sense in madden fantasy land nothing nothing i hate it all right mitch morris contract extension He's going to test that free agency. What's the center franchise tag? 11 mil? I'm going to franchise tag Mitch Morris. It's, it's only 11 mil. It's one year. Whatever. Sue me. Ooh, Teron Johnson goes up to star development. I stared at the screen for about 20 minutes and didn't notice until I did. But uh, yeah, nobody else goes up any development trade. What is wrong with the offense? Devin Singletary, it has to be. He's not good in simulation. Why? Number 17 overall. Who is on the board? There's a good safety. Shaquille Reese. That might be the pick. We've taken a lot of offensive line. Maybe we'll just do it again for fun. Because there's nothing more fun than drafting O-line, right? Now I only have these two safeties on the board. Shaq Reese seems to be a slightly better player. Only 5'9". Khalil Odom out of USF. A little bit slower. 6'4", though. Um, we're going to go Shaquille Reese. 75 overall. Star or better development. Number 10 in the class. We think about 17. I think it was a good pick. 88 speed, 82 hit power. Maybe something there. <laughs> Maybe. I don't, I don't know what we'll do with that. Here's a running back. Billy Hall out of Mississippi State. And he looks like he has a bright 
White Future, Billy Hall, 71 overall, normal development. He, um, wow, Christian McCaffrey, real tough working guy, first guy in, last guy out. Maybe a, like, bring your lunch pail to work type of guy, <laughs> whatever they say. Um, not a great class, so I'm going to trade down again. That's always fun. Need a tight end. Should I trade picks for a tight end? Maybe. All right, we're trading a two, a three, and a four for Gordon Ramsey from the Browns. We'll see what we can cook up with him at tight end. Um, should be pretty good. Hopefully um, not a big nightmare there, but we're taking it from the Browns. So um, with Freddie Kitchens, there's no kitchen nightmare going on. We will see what's going on, though. Ooh, Ramsey has a superstar development. We got him for nothing. He's got armbar. Interesting. Well, uh, he's slow as anything. He doesn't even catch well. Oh, he's terrible. How are you an 80? You are, This is a fullback. Okay. Okay, so we moved our drafted free safety Shaq Reese to outside linebacker. Now he's 5'9", but he'll play that money backer role. He's 2'10". He's built like a bowling ball, and he's really fast. He tackles okay. Good coverage ability for a linebacker. Move good well down to right end, and um, he and Marcus Davenport will kind of do whatever they do. We've got some good uh, cornerback options. Our defense is good. Trying to fill some holes. You know what I mean? Uh, we need we need to be good this year. And we're not. So I'm still figuring out how to be good. It's a tough thing to figure out. Four and three at the midseason mark, so I'm very excited to go. Uh, five and 11 should be great. Dolphins 0-8. So they're having a heck of a season, but they're going to beat us next time we play. I would bet anything on it. We'll upgrade the team. Shaq Reese, already four skill points? Okay. Maybe we got something there. We're up to an 87 overall, so we're actually in a position where it seems real good now. Maybe we'll even make the playoffs. I don't want to I don't want to speak too soon and say anything too ridiculous. Defensively, we still don't know his development trait. Is he even playing? He's got to have superstar superstar X factor with how he fast he's upgrading and he's not even playing. I mean, he's we're going to make him our sub linebacker. That feels like not a terrible idea. Oh wait, no it does. But we're going to we're going to work around it. Ed Oliver. Got to bring him back, huh? T Higgins, Henry Ruggs, Marco Wilson, Mitch Morse is back. Chase Lucas, TJ Vasher. Is that the Texas Tech receiver that's real good? Yeah. Watched him play actually. I went to uh I went to Texas versus Is my lighter going to fall? Okay. Mm, probably. Ooh, I can't tell if it's moving. Do I, I have the depth perception of a T-Rex. I got a big light. I, I don't even use it anymore. But I watched him play when I watched Texas versus Texas Tech. Um, at the, it was at the DKR. At DKR. At the stadium, I should say. Um, for the game. And he was pretty good. I, this was kind of like a irrelevant story. I don't know why I said it. I'm kind of freaking out about this light now. At Oller wants higher salary. I can understand that. Brought back Marco Wilson, Henry Ruggs, T. Higgins. I still want to bring back Ed Oliver. I don't think we need to bring back Mitch Morse. I know I franchise tagged him, but that was just to give us an extra year to figure things out. It's like a gap year after you finish high school. If you want to go to college or not, you figure it out. Um, I didn't do that. Maybe I should have. Not relevant to the video, but it is something to think about. Ed Oliver's back. That is a huge get. The rest, I mean, we can really just push off. Is Chase Lucas going to be super cheap? Oh, he's so cheap. We can definitely bring back Chase Lucas on a super long deal. And he is back. And then Mitch Morris, again, I don't really think we need him. Finally, we made the playoffs. We First round by a 10-6. and six. I'll take it. Whatever way we can get in, I will take it. That's in more ways than one, if you know what I mean. Um, now we actually, we played really well. We could have even beaten the Cowboys, lost by a touchdown, lost by a field goal to the Dolphins, lost by two to the Eagles. So we definitely played well this year. First round bye is kind of strange given only 10 wins, but can't really complain about it because we finally did okay. Our offense was uh, still not all that good. Josh Allen was disappointing. I don't know. I feel like stat-wise, I mean, Devin Singletary was good, but stat-wise it feels like we were 
worse than previous seasons. Yet here we are in the playoffs. Joey Bosa only nine and a half sacks. Sim stats are garbage. They're garbage, man. I want more. I want more of everything. Five upgrade points for Shaquille Reese. He's got to be superstar X Factor. Yeah, he's at least superstar. He's leveling up or progressing so quickly. I need to see it. Show me superstar X Factor. He's super superstar. Okay, superstar is still pretty good. So this was a sick pick. He's an 82 overall outside linebacker. 82 zone coverage, and he could move back to safety probably because Micah Hyatt is no good. But he is upgrading about as quickly as any player I've ever seen. He was a 73 overall. He's up 10 almost. Up 10 overall. We'll see who we play in the divisional. Um, I want to do another season after this. So we're not going to jump in here. Do we beat the 9-7 and seven Ravens? Well, you had to know that was coming. Because we don't win games. That's just what we don't do. Mitch Morse. I don't want you. He's staying at pretty much the same overall, but we're going to go a different direction. We've got backup offensive linemen that can come in and fill that spot. Who's it going to be? Peters or Masters? Probably Ralph Peters is 26. Masters is 24. It's going to be Masters. Chase Young is in free agency. This would be a cool player to get. There's no shot. We, we don't have any money. Damn, all that class is in free agency. Do I usually go this far? What's the deal? I don't know. We're going to simulate to the draft. This will probably be the final season. We'll see what we can do. Picking at number 28 overall. What do we even need to draft? We it, It's a weird situation where no one that we draft... I don't know why I kind of sounded like Bill Cosby a little bit. It's a weird situation where... Um, that, that didn't really sound all that much like Bill Cosby, but I, I heard it in my head. Um, I hear voices. Running back could be a need. And then defensively, I think we're fine. I don't know. I, I think we're okay. All right, at the end of the first round, we're going to take a uh, not first round player. Clayton Hart, third round guy. is a 76 overall, number three in the class. So he's pretty good, actually, but only normal development. This thing has gone strangely. I mean, that's that's pretty good. Taking a number three overall player at 28, and they're projected to go third round. I like it, but it's a little weird. And then at the end of the second round, I mean, I kept saying I was going to trade up, and then I didn't, but, like, there was never really a reason to. Like, there, were, and everyone's off my draft board. I was only going to draft a tackle. It looked pretty good. Um, I don't know. Another, like, ugh, whatever class... Do I take another corner just because he's first round projected? Could take a safety. We're going to take him. Travis Meredith. Ooh. 69 overall. Star better development. Ranked number 30. We take him at number 60. And that overall. That tackling. That play rec. That awareness. Nice. Okay, this is the team for what will probably be the final season. I, I mean, it's, it's okay. It's okay. The offensive line's underwhelming, but we've got like one great piece on it. Our starting tight end looks great. He isn't actually. He just blocks well. Do we need an actual tight end? Probably. Um, we probably do. We don't really have any money for that, though. And then our defense still looks great. We just need our players to actually play well, which doesn't sound like it's asking, or asking that much, as we have Graham Gano as a kicker. Um, it is asking that much because they don't do it. They don't play well. They play whatever. They like they barely care. And it's not that's not good enough for me. I'd like you to care a lot. They're not about it. So will we make the playoffs in the final season? I mean it's a maybe. Your guess is honestly as good as mine. I I think I'd lean towards no just because uh, it's always no, pretty much. So I feel like that's a good bet. All right, midseason mark. We are five and two, so get ready for disappointment. The Patriots are six and two. Uh, we're not going to bother with any re-signings or contract extensions. Travis Meredith already has three skill points. Some of these random rookies um, 
are really impressing me with how quickly they're getting upgraded for players that don't play a lot. And that, that is definitely something to think about. Um, I mean, our team's really good. I, I expect us to be super successful. It's just kind of surprising to actually be successful. And I stopped at week 14 and we're 6-6. Six and six. I told you, get ready for disappointment. It's the only thing that can happen. Playoff time. Guess what? We're not going to make it. Yeah, cue up the suspense. Yeah, thanks. Went 8, 7, and 1. After starting 5 and 2, I told you. I told you there was no way. All we do is suck. Deshaun Watson wins MVP of a 6, 9, and 1 Texan team. Yeah, you show me a quarterback that wins MVP of a team that wins 6 games. I'll show you a liar. It only happens in the game. Josh Allen at 5. Defensive player of the year. Josh Allen. Not our Josh Allen. He didn't win anything ever. Tremaine Edmonds at 2. Get Shaquille Reese at 8. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Laron Strong. Max Barrett. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Nobody. Uh, well, Clayton Hart. Whoever. Who is Clayton Hart? Is that the free safety we took? He's up to a 78? Well, should I do another season? Probably shouldn't. I really probably shouldn't. But I don't want to end on just making the playoffs once and be like, oh, we'll make them next year. And then we don't. Shaq Reese is up to superstar X Factor. Also, the free safety that we drafted, by the way, as he has shut down, has superstar development. He's ready to go over Micah Hyde. I mean, I, I we'll do one more season. We'll do one more. And we're still it's not gonna matter. Like, are you kidding? Of course it's not gonna matter. But we can hope and dream. In order to create cap space, we gotta cut some guys. And they're tough cuts. Levi Wallace has got to go, 30 years old. He's regressing down to his 76 overall. Uh, I'm considering cutting Deion Dawkins. I'm considering cutting Matt Milano. These are tough decisions, but we need to clear up cap space very, very badly if we want to be competitive and uh, bring some of these guys back. So, I mean, we have some tough decisions, and we don't, like... We don't have enough players to where we have a ton of savings on a lot of players. There's just a big penalty associated with a ton of guys. Deion Dawkins will probably be our best bet, and we can just fill him with a backup offensive guard. We're going to have to cut him. We're just going to have to because we won't be able to re-sign our, our players. We have two guys that I really want to bring back, and that's it. And we need to bring them back. But it's going to be tough. We have Jacob Eason somehow, but I, Evan Jennings and Keontae Bynes. I need to bring both of those guys back. They're very good. They're very young. We're not going to be able to afford it. We don't have any money. Evan Jennings is the one I want more. So I'm going to offer him nothing. And he's like, okay, I'm not going to take it. And then I'm going to have to franchise tag him. And we're going to have to lose Keontae Bynes. We are so negative in cap because of the franchise tag. But we get to keep him for another year. So that's fine. Marcus Davenport is going to slide over to defensive tackle. We're going to go to the draft. <laughs> And um, we're going to experience another year of pain. I hope you guys enjoy. Also, Tredavious White got up to Superstar X Factor. Micah Hyde's regressing a lot. Can I cut Micah Hyde? What does that look like? Oh, no good. No good. <laughs> no savings and a huge penalty. I'm in. But uh, Meredith is going to start over him now. The defense is still really, really good. It's just that, um, how do I put this? We still don't win any games. We need right guard. Our receiving core is great, but they don't play well. It's, I don't know why Bill's playbook is so terrible when I'm the Bills, but I'm going to change it for the final season to something else, and hopefully we get actual success this time. Whoa. whoa, whoa. Oh, so did the CPU draft... Who drafted Clayton Hart? I thought it was a free safety. Almost. Well, now color me confused... I'm going to trade Marco Wilson just because he's, he's got a lot of uh, a lot of money and I can get picks and stuff. So Marco Wilson is going to help me get number 12 overall. We have backups that are good uh, that can come in. I'm going to get a lot of a lot of picks this year, I think, that and we exceed the league salary cap if we do that. Um, yeah, that is true because the because of the um, the negative cap hit associated. Now, could I get rid of Micah Hyde in the same fell swoop? 
Probably not. It's still going to be there's a negative cap associated with it. Yeah, um, we really can't make any trade involving a player. We could trade picks for picks, but we don't really have enough to move up. I want to hold on to that second. It's going to be real tough to move up. I want two first rounders. Uh, she's three, a four. I'm gonna take. I'll take out the four, and I'll add a two, and I'll get a first round pick from whoever I can. All right, we're trading um, a one next year, a two next year, and a three this year for a one this year from the Titans. Hopefully, these trades pan out. We can't really move up the board at all. We're in a really bad cap situation. But we'll see what we can do, who we can bring in to improve the team. Offensive line is a position that somehow we need. We also need running back, uh, maybe. And there are a lot of good running backs. A lot of good ones. Okay, so I definitely want Rajon Sutherland. He's a player that I'm worried would get taken in the first round just because of his skill and his position. So I think I'm going to reach all the way down the board for him and then make a decision about one of the running backs. So Rajon Sutherland, 77 overall, number four in the class. Star, better development. Excellent pick. Really, really good player. Can definitely come in and start right away. And then whatever running back is there at 27, it might be all of them. I can make a decision at that time. It'll be interesting. I could start him right away depending on development trait. I could take two of three if they're still available. So let's take one of these first round running backs first. Do I want receiving back with A- minus catching? Or we want the receiving back who looks like he can carry the ball a little bit. Let's go Rashawn Spears out of Temple. 77 overall, number 7 in the class. Only normal development. So he's quite good, number 7 overall player in the class. And at 77 overall, leads me to believe that this draft class is pretty stacked. Now, if one of the other running backs is there at 18 in the second round, I will probably do that. They might both be gone. Who knows? They are both gone. We can check what their overalls are later. Um, I, mean, I got I got two of the players I wanted. Take a uh, backup defensive tackle, too, in Mike Gardner, number 26. We took him at 50. That's going to do it for the draft. Weird. This is a weird rebuild. Weird rebuild. We got into some really bad cap situations, and that's why I usually don't go hog wild in free agency, you know, bringing in everybody. Like, Chris Godwin's a huge contract that really hurt us, but... He hasn't really even performed that well. It's same thing with Joey Bosa. Huge contract, hasn't performed that well. If they perform well, you can rationalize taking them because they're sick players. And you can, you know, rationalize paying them all that money. When they don't do anything, you're like, what the hell? So they both went at the top of the second round. So it looks like we made the absolute worst decision in terms of drafting running backs. Yeah, we got the only running back. First of all, he's the lowest overall. And second of all, he has the worst development trait. So he has star. And then the other running back. Very excited to figure out what he has. I hope it's Superstar X Factor so I can hate myself. Lance Henderson, best player in the class. 78 overall. He has... It'll probably be star as well. But we shall see. It is star as well. Okay. So it's, you know, it's not the worst. It's just we're, we're one development trait down. It is what it is. Got a really, really good left tackle, which we needed badly. Because um, now we can move Meadows back over. Or we can move Cody Ford inside. Sutherland can do a number of different things. He can even play right guard. Maybe we'll just leave him at right guard. That'll be fine. Okay, so this is the offense. Offensive line looks, again, pretty good. Not amazing, but pretty good. Great receiving core that has underperformed big time. Good running backs. Josh Allen continues to progress. And then defensively, we're awesome. Meredith is going to improve probably near an 80. Our defensive line is a pretty solid. Two studs and then two okay players. Cornerbacks are quite good. Linebacking core is amazing with Shaq Reese kind of leading the way now with superstar X Factor. This should be a really, really good team, man. But I'm just so worried that yet again, they will let me down. I want Jadavius White on the boundary. I don't want him as a nickel guy. Reese is going to be my main, my main sub linebacker. We should be in a good spot, man. Please don't let me down. I want to make the playoffs. Let me end the video on a good note. So once again, this is how the team's going to look. Again, I think we have something here, but that will, uh, that will be seen in the coming weeks, months, if we can actually make the playoffs. I'm going to jump to the midseason mark, 
and I'm going to brace myself for disappointment, just like my parents. What? Two and five. I mean, this is just one that has gone so, so terribly. The team, I think, is in a really good spot. We're up to near a 90 overall. What are the Broncos? The Broncos are five and two. Show me the Broncos overall, just so I can get mad. They're an 80. It's just like, it seems like it doesn't matter how good your team is, which is so confusing. It's so random. I th the simulation engine is the worst. We are two and five, and we and the Patriots are seven and one. First of all, we're going to lose to the Broncos, but let me see the Patriots overall. They're going to have a very similar schedule to us as we are in the same division, which means they play the same divisional opponents. They have the same um, different division that they play. So if like the AFC East plays the, all the NFC South one year, they're going to have all the same opponents pretty much with the exception of like four. They're at 84 overall. I just don't like we're better than them. I know overall is not the end all be all. I understand that, but it's a video game. It's simulation. It should matter a lot. And it doesn't matter. We got Perry Hughes instead of Jerry Hughes. Who are you fooling? He's just coming out of retirement under a different name. He's like, hmm, how do they not recognize me? Jerry Hughes. What do I, I got to choose something so different. Perry Hughes. They'll never guess. But uh, yeah, we're three and five. We're going to miss the playoffs. I'm going to end the video. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be sad. Miss the playoffs. Went six and 10. We're 90 overall, 91 offense, 89 defense. I don't know what to do. Some of these go great. Some of these go very, very badly. And this is one that went very badly. Devin Singletary is up to star development. This is the end of the video, by the way, as you can see from the time that it is done. But just uh, overall disappointing. Uh, built a pretty good team. 90 overall. Got to be the highest overall team in the league. And we made the playoffs one time. Some rebuild. But it's all about building the team and then having good drafts, signing good free agents, progressing players. Sometimes it doesn't go well with simulation for one reason or another. I really think the sim engine is like against the user as well. So maybe that's conspiracy theory, but I've done enough of these. I've done how many different leagues this year? I think that this might be, and yeah, we can actually find out. What number of, uh, of league is this in my franchise on this account? 101. So I've done, I've made 101 different franchise files, and that's between realistic rebuilds, fantasy style rebuilds, franchises in general. I've had 101 different leagues, done f over 70 different rebuilds. Here we are this year. I know enough about it. It's, it's stupid. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Thank you.